All right, so the next problem we're going to take a look at is problem 263 from the Young and Friedman University Physics book. A ball starts from rest and rolls down a hill with uniform acceleration traveling 200 meters during the second five seconds of its motion. How far did it roll during the first five seconds of its motion? So, you know, normally when you see problems about a ball rolling down a hill, you're, you're, you would think you might be into a, a two-dimensional problem. This is just a one-dimensional problem. So, you know, we're not really worried about components. We just want to figure out how far the ball has rolled. So let's start off with a little uh, diagram. So let's take our black pen here and draw what we've got. Now, why won't that work for me? Because I'm on the eraser. Okay, so this is the scenario we've got. We've got a ball and it's rolling and we've measured it in sort of two segments. So this is a five second uh, segment and this is a five second segment. And we're asking, you know, if, okay, so the ball's traveled 200 meters in this segment. How many meters has it traveled in the first segment? So pretty, again, it's, one, it's a problem that's not just a plug in the numbers problem. You need to have a pretty good handle on the equations of motion um, in order to be able to solve this one effectively. So what do we know about the ball? Well, we know for the first five seconds of its motion, it's starting from rest. So we, we know that it's V naught is going to be equal to uh, zero because it's starting from rest and we know that it moves for five seconds. So, you know, when you're doing these problems, you're always thinking about in terms of those equations of motion and which terms do we know and which terms do we not know. So what, what can that tell us then? So we know what the situation is here. What is that going to tell us about the situation here? Well, if V the velocity at the end of the time frame we're interested in is equal to v naught plus a t. Uh, that tells us then in this case that v is going to be equal to uh, there's no v naught, so this guy can be crossed out, and it's going to be equal to the acceleration times the time which that acceleration has been taking place for. Sorry, which is not t seconds. We know what that is. It's going to be five seconds. So we know. That v, which is the velocity at this point here, is going to be equal to uh, the acceleration times five seconds. So that's the initial speed for the second five seconds of the motion here. So this, the initial speed at this point, which I've already put in a black arrow, and now I've put in a green arrow, is going to be a times five. The acceleration times the time that that acceleration has been acting for. So for the second five seconds then, uh, what have we got? Okay, so let's draw a line under this and say, okay, that's so far we've just been talking about the second five seconds. Now we're going to talk about the first five seconds. Sorry, let's reverse that. So V naught for the second five seconds is going to be equal to the acceleration times the five seconds which it's been taking place for, which is our V naught here for the second part. And the time is going to be equal to five seconds so we know that the time segments we're dealing with are five second time segments and we know that x minus x naught is going to be equal to 200 meters so if we're looking if we call this point here x naught and this point here x we know that the the distance between them is 200 meters that's plenty of information to apply to the equations of motion that we know uh, very well and try and figure out, you know, okay, can we figure out the acceleration from there? If we know the acceleration and we know how long that acceleration has been taking place for five seconds, then we can figure out the distance. So, equation of motion, let's write it down to remind ourselves which one we need. X minus X naught is equal to V naught times T plus a half A T squared in one dimension. Lovely. So, that's going to give us, uh, what is that going to give us? That's going to give us, 200 meters, so that's our x minus x naught, is equal to v naught times t. Now we need to make the link between what our v naught is here. Our v naught is this stuff here, which we figured out earlier on. So v naught is going to be a, oops, go back to black pen. V naught is going to be a times 5, and then t in this equation here is another 5 seconds. So we've got a times 5 times 5, plus 1 half times the acceleration, again, which we don't know, times t squared, and t squared here is going to be 5 seconds squared. So if we solve this equation now for a, we get a is equal to 5.333 
meters per second squared. So the acceleration of the ball right from the point where it starts moving uh, through the first five seconds, through the first five seconds is 5.333 meters per second squared. Now, what, how, how can we figure out from that then how far the ball moves in that first five seconds? So we have our x, let's use the same equation again, and we'll write out again, x minus x naught is equal to v naught t uh, plus half a t squared, as it was already. So we've sort of, we're wasting our time a little bit writing the equation out again, but uh, no harm. So v naught t in those first five seconds, v naught in the first five seconds is zero. So this term then becomes zero. So we get zero plus a half times What's our acceleration? We worked that out in the last part of the problem, 5.333. And the time that we're talking about is five seconds. And that's going to be squared because this guy here is squared. So if, if this is squared, this has to be squared. So we worked that out. And x minus x naught is just the distance traveled. So x minus x naught is actually what we're looking for. The distance traveled in those first five seconds. And when we work that out, let me just check my calculator here when we work that out we get 67 meters so in the first five seconds the ball when traveling with this constant acceleration traveled 67 meters in the second five seconds as it tells us in the in the question the ball travels 200 meters and if you were to keep checking in on the ball as it moved along every five seconds you'd you'd find that it had traveled further and further and further due to that constant acceleration 